you're here because you've got a heating system where you've installed an extension or something like that and you don't have a switch live to go back to the main control center, to the pump, to the boiler, to the thermostat or whatever and you don't want to rip up floorboards and loads of housing stuff to get that wire back to that center well this is the video for you because i'm going to be installing and showing you how this rf solutions beast works it's going to stop you from having to need that wire but also this thing is incredible for multiple other applications as well like switching on a light down the end of the garden where you don't want to have to run a wire down there i can speak english let's go inside and learn more about it come on <laughs> So the problem, you've got something like a three port valve like this here, okay, and it's up in the loft and it's miles away from where the boiler is and you've fitted a new boiler or something like that and you need to get that switch live down to it. I've had this problem in my own home. I think I had to take the uh, box work out in the downstairs toilet, rip up the floor in the bathroom, then take it up through my airing cupboard into the loft to get that wire there. I wish at that time, I'd known about this product. But there are other things that I could have done with the mains link that we've got here today, like control lights down in the shed because I don't have a lead that runs all the way down the garden to a light switch in the house or stuff like that. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna have a look in the box and see what's there. Then I'm gonna show you a very basic install right here on this wall behind us of it switching something. So you can actually see how it switches without there being a wire between the two points. Then I'm gonna show you how far away this can actually switch switch something by leaving one of the points on here and we're going to go outside into the rain and I'm going to show you how far it can do it. Click on the link, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed yet, get out of here now, sling your rook, let's go. Mwah! So this is the RF Solutions Beast. I know a lot of people who are fans of plumber parts are thinking, well, he's not doing any plumbing. This is electricals. Maybe you should get Artisan Electrics to come and do it. Well, they're only just down the way and there's no one there at the moment. They're out putting solar panels in. And if you look at the weather outside, I don't envy them. So this is all you've got in the box, okay? So this is a transmitter here and you've got a receiver here. We've also got some nice little grommety bits as well. And that is literally it. Really, really simple. I mean, that is the dream thing about this. It's very, very simple, very, very easy to install. So let's do a mock-up installation now. I'll show you how I would fit this to switch something like a light bulb. But what we can also do is show it to open up a two port valve, a three port valve, or initiate a supply from a thermostat. Uh, but I'm just gonna do it with a light bulb today because I think a lot of the people who are here looking for this video, they already know what they wanna switch. They just wanna do it without wires. So the mains link RX, this is the receiver, okay? Now if we open it up, first thing I want you to notice is look, we've got this little rubber bit in here. That means it's IP68 rated. Then we've got our switched input outputs and our permanent lives as well. And I'll come to those in a moment. Let's have a very quick look in the actual transmitter. This is the transmitter, same bit on the box there, IP60 rate on the back. We've got a live in, RF comms on the out, but we'll be looking at that in a sec. And on the back, a lot more simpler on the back bit here. So for our experiment, we need our receiver to be near what we want to receive. Even though it doesn't have to be near, but for the experiment, I want you to see this. Well, I'm just gonna punch the uh, holes out in here using my hole punch kit, which is the back end of my impact driver and a screwdriver. The lovely people at RF Solutions provide little grommets as well, so we can keep up that IP65 rating. I'll just wind them in there like so. Keeps that waterproof. -ish. Now this is ready to go on the wall. This is obviously all class two, so we don't need an earth. Missed. But that shows how strong the box is. Right, I'm gonna put this here. Switched input, live in, live in. So, we've got everything installed, okay? Now, let's have a little look behind each one of these bits here so I can explain to you how this works. So, this is our switch. That is just a switch, okay? And you need to see programmers, you need to see thermostats, you need to see the stats on the side of cylinders as just that as well. They are just a switch, but they just switch on and off according to temperature, not according to the pressure of a finger, okay? So see that as a programmer. This could be a thermostat. 
This could be something that you've controlled from your phone, like a Tado stat that comes and switches on through the Tado thermostat and then sends power to our transmitter. So we've got a live and neutral comes into here, is switched by whatever, and then sends power to our transmitter here. So all we've got is a live in and a neutral in. And that is it, that's that side of this done. This is our receiver, okay? So inside here, you've looked, we've got a few more wires, okay? So the receiver needs to switch a live that is there. So you will have to have a live supply going to the receiver for it to switch and send a live supply through to whatever you want to turn on or off. If RF Solutions had come up with a way of sending electricity through the air from the transmitter to the receiver, I would be investing in that company right now, okay? Because no one's done that yet, not even Mr. Musk, all right? So that's number one. So we've got our live in, and our live in is going to be switched and then send a live out to what we've got here, our little light bulb. Now see the light bulb as being the boiler, the pump. It could even be a light bulb in your shed, couldn't it? If you want to switch on the lights from down in the house, you could do that. Because in a minute, once I show you this working, we're gonna take off the transmitter, off the wall, and we're gonna walk as far away as we can, outside, probably across the other side of the park with it, to see whether we can turn it on, okay, from that distance. I'm hoping we can get somewhere in the region, any, anywhere over 30 meters through a metal wall and a brick wall is gonna be pretty much useful for most homes in the UK and most applications. So let's button this one up, and then I'm gonna show you this actually working. So you know, I've wired the transmitter off a plug just so we could show you how this works, all right? So I'm just gonna plug this in now, just over here, and that's now on. As you can see, there's no lights on this yet because we haven't switched it yet. We haven't turned our programmer on. We haven't turned the thermostat up. We haven't switched the light switch inside the house to turn the shed light on down at the end of the garden. On this side here, we've got our live supply coming in to be switched to go out to whatever component we want to switch on or off, be it the boiler, the pump, a two port valve live, a three port valve live, or even you can use these to send back switch signals for when those two ports and three port valves are safely open. So you can think about that as well. There's so many different things these could be used for. I am standing in a place, there is no wires between the two. Have a look, look, have a look around. It's like those things the you know, you know when you do the, the people getting cut in half at the circus, yeah? There are no wires in between these two here. That's how quick it is. Turn it off, off it goes. Turn it on again, on it goes. Your heating system's reached temperature, oh, I'll turn it off. You've installed a new underfloor heating system in an extension and you don't want to whip up all the floorboards and walls to signal back to the main airing cupboard area where all the wiring is. Oh well, the underfloor heat needs to come on. Oh look, the boiler and the pumps just come on in the airing cupboard. This is very good, all right? So now you've seen them next to each other and that's great, brilliant. But we're in a studio at the moment that's got metal walls, brick walls, loads of wood, loads of stuff in and out. But we've also got a long way that we can go out of here to demonstrate how far this can actually transmit. So I want to show to you that this can transmit through the fabric of a house easily without any problems. I'm going to take this off the wall and I go outside. Some of you are going to say I'm mental because it's raining at the moment, even though the sun's come out a bit. But I want you to see this. Let's do it. Right, so I've taken everything off the wall. We've got it in this nice little wooden panel here. We've got obviously our receiver there, the transmitter here. We've got our plug so we can show how far this is gonna work. I've got Max's phone just down there and we're using FaceTime so we can actually show this switch in. There's not gonna be any cuts in this edit. So watch closely guys, here we go. See how far we can get, okay? So we're walking away, that's still running. We're walking out of the studio. So we've got a metal wall just there. We've got a metal wall just there. And there's also a wooden wall on that side as well. So there's that. Then look at this, we've got a big old breeze block wall here. You'd think that'd munch up radio frequencies, wouldn't ya? Like an American at a Burger King. This place, I don't even know what's in there. It's just always shut. Yeah, very strange. And then we've got another breeze block wall here. So let's go in here, it says do not enter. So what do we do? We enter. Right, there's been no cuts, there's nothing happened. Ooh. 
Right, there's our phone. Yeah, can you see it all? Yeah. Would it work? Hey, look at that. That is quality, isn't it? Look at that. <laughs> I'd just like to say, subscribe to my vlog channel, Tons of James. <laughs> um, while we're here though, I mean, look at that. How good is that? And that is what, 30 meters through two breeze block walls, yeah? Look at it, I mean, come on guys, it's working, you can see that. Through two breeze block walls and a metal wall. But more importantly, can I get triple 20? The Oki's over here. Also, if you're ever gonna put on a music festival, use CEG. Brian Avis, get these guys in. Do you know what the best part is now? <laughs> what? Everyone knows where you are. Yeah, <laughs> they know where I am anyway. Come and get me. I'll be here waiting, lubed up. Guitar Hero RF Solution style. Da -na -na -na, na -na 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 -na. So guys, I think you've seen there that this not only works, but it works through multiple different things. I mean, we've got pallet, wood, metal, multiple brick walls, massive amount of distance as well. You've seen it there, we didn't cut that whatsoever and it works. So what would I use this for as a plumber? I would use this to send switch lives back from two port valves, so the heating system knows that a valve is open. I'd use it to have switch lives go from programmers back to parts of the system that maybe have been added on a, as a retrofit or anywhere along the way that you don't wanna to have to rip floorboards up or anything like that to put wires in. But also as a DIY, I I would probably use this for switching on a light down at the end of the shed. Just use your noggin for what you could use these for, be it as a plumber, an electrician, or a DIYer. I've used these for loads of different little things, but I haven't used them on this video here that I think you're desperately gonna wanna watch because you don't wanna make these mistakes when it comes to compression fittings. See you in the next video, guys, and remember to hold tight.